This video is brought to you by Squarespace. Why did the Sand Village betray the Leaf Village during the Chunin exams and lie themselves with Orochimaru? This may seem like a weird question because yeah, they just kind of betrayed them and attacked the Leaf Village, maybe because they wanted more power, but if you think about it, they need a reason, right? And it would be very boring if the reason was just because the Kazekage is evil and the people there are evil and therefore they wanted to attack the Leaf Village. Of course there's more to it. The Leaf in the Sand made an alliance where they would help each other in terms of missions and security of their lands. And this is something that many shinobis in the Sand Village itself thought was a good thing. All of this happened before the Chunin exams, and this is the reason why the Sand Village was even invited, because the nations invited to the Chunin exams in Naruto Part 1 are actually the allied nations, and therefore the villages in those nations, of the Leaf Village. Of course, Orochimaru had other plans for the exams, he didn't just want to test his ninjas and try to gain political power by showing off their power, he wanted to destroy the Leaf Village, and getting the Sand to help him out would do a lot for and especially with Gara and with Shukaku there. And if Sasuke hadn't wounded Gara in their fight in the arena, things could have gone much differently. If Shukaku had gone ballistic in the middle of the Leaf Village, even if Naruto and Jiraiya had arrived with their big toad summons to contain it, it would still have dealt a massive amount of damage to the Leaf Village. Not as much as the Nine Tails did back in the day, but it would have still been bad. So naturally Orochimaru wanted that asset for his plan, and because he actually intended on completely leveling the Leaf Village, he did succeed on killing the third Hokage, but his plan, holistically speaking, didn't work out the way he wanted, especially because he lost his arms in the process. But the actual reason why the Sand Village decided to betray the Leaf has to do with geopolitics. And I know this may sound boring and not very interesting because geopolitics is just a word thrown around by specialists and during class, but trust me, this is very interesting and it does a lot for the Naruto world building. Which is not the focus of the Naruto series, the world building in Naruto is not bad, but it's sometimes a bit lacking from time to time. Kishimoto definitely focuses more on characters, and sure the world building is consistent for the most part. However, when it comes to the political aspect of the shinobi world, this is mostly ignored in the series, this case is an interesting exception to it. The Sand Village definitely decides to attack the Leaf because of their interests, but it's not because of an evil plan to completely change how the world operates, which is Let's be real, the goals of most of the Naruto villains, take Nagato, take Obito, take Madara, take even Kaguya, they all have this grandiose plan that they will impose to make the world a better place shaped out of their ideology. But this, well, this motivation of the Sand Village is completely different. Now, the most interesting aspect of it is that the alliance with the Leaf Village and the Land of Fire was the actual reason why they decided to attack the Leaf. When they established this military alliance, the feudal lord of the Land of Wind, which is the land of the Sand Village, he began to cut costs and not invest as much in the military of the Sand Village as he used to, because now, with the big allies of the Land of Fire and the Leaf Village, he didn't need to provide so much for his own shinobi army because the Leaf Village could essentially pick up the slack, and therefore he could divert his resources to other things, it's even implied that he was very corrupt by Baki when he is talking about it to his team, and because the investment on the Sand Ninjas has diminished so much, they have become less powerful, they've lost military strength over time after the alliance was made, because now the feudal lord of the Land of Wind is relying on the Leaf Village, and he is giving missions that would have otherwise been been assigned to the Sand Village to the 
the Leaf Village, which is providing the shinobi of the Leaf with more missions and therefore more payment, which they can use to invest on their own military while the Sand Village's military just decreases in power. This cannot be ignored by the Kazekage and the ninjas from the Sand, because if this continues to happen, more and more power will go to the Leaf Village instead of the Sand, and the power balance between the five major nations, and especially to the Sand Village, will shift and they will be vulnerable. Ninjas are always thinking about the next major war they'll have to fight. After all, in a brief period of 50 years from when the villages were founded to the present time in Naruto Part 1, they fought three major ninja wars where every single major nation fought against each other and many shinobis lost their lives. At first glance, this alliance between the sand and the leaf was a good thing because now two powerful nations can combine their forces should the need arise, but in the end of the day, it's not. At least not how the Alliance was configured in that point of the story. Because of the Alliance, this power imbalance grew, and therefore, even if a war were to begin against the other major nations, or any sort of war really, the Leaf Village would have the upper hand in the relationship, and their influence would be much greater than the Sand Village's influence. So, if things continue to go that way, and the Sand military just decreases in power so much, then and eventually the Sand Village and even the Land of Wind could become a puppet state to the Land of Fire and the Leaf Village. Now could the Kazekage have tried to negotiate with the Feudal Lord of the Land of Wind, being the Kazekage having the power of his shinobis at his disposal? Couldn't he have tried to sway the Feudal Lord into actually providing them with more fundings and more missions? Well, perhaps. We don't know if he actually tried that, this is not really explained that much in the series, because obviously attacking the Leaf Village is an act of war, and having a war against one of the five major nations is not a small deal in the Narutoverse. It can create this power imbalance all over again, and a single conflict between between two of the major nations will definitely ignite a war against the others. It's just like the two great wars in the real world, just because two nations attacked each other or something weird happened like Francis Ferdinand got assassinated, then the entire world blows itself apart. So maybe if the Kazekage tried to negotiate things with a feudal lord of his own nation, things could have turned out a little bit better. And the baffling thing is that, what is stopping the Kazekage from just arriving at the Feudal Lord's household with powerful shinobis who he commands? After all, the Kagi of the village has command over his or her shinobis, and they will definitely obey him to the best of his abilities. What's stopping him from just arriving there and demanding the feudal lord to supply them with more money and missions? This is what he wanted. He didn't want the Sand Village's military to decrease in power. Does the feudal lord have an army of his own, another shinobi army, or perhaps another type of army, like a samurai army? This is never really explained. Before we continue, I'd like to talk about today's sponsor, Squarespace, which is the best tool out there for you to create your own website. Squarespace makes the process of making your website much, much easier than you expect. You don't have to hire someone that knows code, you don't have to do anything like that, you just have to log in their website, and their tool allows you to create websites with professional quality. And the tools that are available to you are easy to use and very intuitive. They have several templates for you to choose from. You can customize your website exactly how you want, it doesn't matter what you want the website for. You can be a blogger, you can be an artist wanting to spread your own Art around the world, sell your things on the website, they can do all that stuff. So go to Squarespace right now and you can get a free trial for a month and then when you're ready to launch your website, head to squarespace.com slash Diagonite to get 10% off. Now let's get back to the video. One thing in geopolitics is that the one who holds the stick holds the power. In the end of the day, those who have the monopoly of violence are the ones who are in control. And in the Narutoverse, the Kages have the monopoly of violence. They control the armies of ninjas in the world. And even if the feudal lord has an army of his own, just like the Guardian 12 we see in the Land of Fire, they are 
nothing in comparison to the might of a shinobi village. Which means that obviously the Kazekagi had hidden intentions when aligning himself with Orochimaru. Sure, the feudal lord's policies were affecting the sand village and that was something that had to be changed, but naturally, he also attacked the Leaf Village because he thought he could gain political capital and also more power to the Sand Village by doing so. If he could somehow take out the Leaf Village from the world map, a powerful player would no longer exist and therefore the overall power held by the Sand Village would increase. Also, we have to take into account another geopolitical aspect of the Land of Wind, which is that the entire place is essentially a big desert, I think it's very likely that the Kazekage was eyeing the fertile lands of the Land of Fire and saying, if we don't have the Leaf Village, we can use those lands to farm because we cannot grow anything here, it's just sand. Desert civilizations rely heavily upon the few sources of water they have at their disposal. Just look at Egypt and the Nile, for example, and usually, because of that, they are vulnerable to all sorts of things. Droughts, disease, because usually they have to use irrigation for agriculture, which means they'll have a lot of worms inside of their stomachs. So having more fertile lands when the leaf village no longer holds control over them could be very advantageous for the land of wind and also the sand village. Obviously, things don't really play out the way the Kazekagi intended. He is assassinated by Orochimaru before he kills Hiruzen, so Orochimaru actually just used the Sand Village. He wanted them for Shukaku essentially and to bolster the strength of the Sound Ninjas during the invasion, but other than that, he didn't care about them at all. He disguised himself as the Kazekage to have an opportunity and attack Hiruzen. He could stay very close to Hiruzen during the entire exam so that he could attack him when the time comes. And if you think about it, Orochimaru's plan here was to use the Sand Village to attack the Leaf, killing both of the Kagi and generating an immense instability in both nations. Of course, he actually wanted to completely destroy the Leaf, which he failed in doing, but the Sand, regardless of the outcome, wouldn't succeed, because that was not Orochimaru's plan. He planned for both nations to get pretty roughed up after the attack. Kabuto even says to Orochimaru, well, we managed to kill two of the five Kagi. It's very impressive. Of course, Orochimaru didn't really like that because he lost his arms and all. Orochimaru's plan here, he wanted to destroy things. He wanted to cause chaos and search for perfection to master every single jutsu, to acquire all the power in the world, and those who stood on his way should be annihilated. He wanted to create new things, and destroying things are a catalyst for change. This is why he encouraged two of the major nations in the world to attack each other indiscriminately. And after the attack, the Sand Village got the worst of it, because, first of all, every single ninja that attacked the Leaf Village got either killed or wounded or they had to retreat, but it's very much implied that the Leaf Scouter attack destroyed most of the Sand and Sound Ninjas they were invading. They lost a Kage, and sure, the Leaf also lost their Kage, but we see that they are scrambling when they're going back to their village after the attack failed. And as they were in an already weaker position because of their feudal lord, this was very bad for them, a very bad political and military defeat. So much so that they have to go back to the Leaf Village pleading for their alliance and we can see that Tsunade accepts them. Because they didn't have that much money to develop their shinobis due to the policies of the feudal lord, the Sand Village focused more on developing powerful ninjas and a smaller quantity at that. Baki himself tells this to his team. They are the product of this new policy because, of course, Gara, Konkuro, and Temari are much more powerful than the average ninja of the rage, especially Gara. And they were trying to focus on quality over quantity because they simply didn't have the 
means to produce a quantity of ninjas that could surpass the other five major nations, and after they are defeated in the attempt to destroy the Leaf Village, they're left struggling a lot here. Tsunani is graceful enough to help them and understand that they were also used by Orochimaru, something she would understand, because in the arc before she sends the Sand siblings to help the Konoha rescue team in the Sasuke retrieval arc, she was being used by Orochimaru as well. Orochimaru was trying to convince her to heal his arm so that he could bring her loved ones back to life. And of course, she knew that if he had his arms back, he would try to destroy the Leaf Village. It's even implied that Tsunade tried to sacrifice Jiraiya's life for the Edo Tensei there, so she knew Orochimaru's a sly bastard. And instead of trying to exact revenge against the Sand Village because of the attack they promoted, she helps them rebuild. This is actually very important. After you beat somebody in war, you ideally don't want this nation to hate you forever, otherwise they're gonna grow in strength. In Naruto Shippuden we see that the Leaf and the Sand are working in a joint program to form new ninjas where ninjas go to the other village and train with other shinobi so that they can develop new skills and share their abilities and do all that kind of stuff. Shikamaru and Tamari are also coordinating the new tuning exams in the beginning of Naruto Shippuden. And because of Tsunade's actions, the Sand and the Leaf, they keep on being allies until essentially present day in the Naruto series. Of course, that after the fourth Great Ninja War ended, every single major nation are now allies, but the Leaf and the San had this relationship for longer. And a lot of people underrate Tsunade as a Hokage, but politically speaking, she is definitely the best one out there, maybe behind Hiruzen, but still, Tsunade is a great Hokage. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't and so already, like this video to help me out with the YouTube algorithm, and watch this other video right here for more content just like this. Thank you so much for watching, guys.